So thank you. So on recycling, just for a second, is there anything we can make money on in recycling? The only thing, what we did at the transfer station was we, we put in the cardboard compactor to the transfer station. That is a single source now, so it's not a mixed stream of recyclables. So instead of paying the 115 that we're paying, we're actually only paying, I think, $66 a ton to get rid of it. So we're not making money, but we're not getting charged nearly, we're only getting charged about half of what we would have been charged if that was mixed in with the waste, with the current recycling stream in your, in front of your house or in whoever. Yeah, so this bin. is where I'm going. So, you know, when I think about what's in my recycle bin, right, it's all the boxes that come to the house, right? It's all the all the cardboard. If we can save money by segregating cardboard, could we save money by segregating cardboard into a barrel of itself where it's only cardboard? Does that help us? It would reduce the amount instead of being charged to that single stream recycling where where glass plastics and all right. that are mixed together if we separate all that we would still be paying we would have we probably be paying less but we'd have it's still based on the average commodity rate as well so we're we're doing that at the transfer station just for that because we know that it's 100 percent separated okay and we would run the risk that it's not going to be 100 percent separated Correct. if it's done at some right. If it's if there's any sort of contamination, then that whole load is contaminated, or I don't know how the they would figure. Right. So okay. So it doesn't. It, the idea doesn't as well intentioned as it is. We can, it's not a good one. I can research it some more to, and, okay. and look at it and see if the, what other commun communities are doing just for that. But again, we were doing like newspapers before. Everybody was okay. have their little bin. Right. They were separating everything. That's just not the. Um, but none of that is so, okay. The other thing is these plastic bottles. All of them have, are worth. A nickel, right, and huh? a dime, right, and so there's a lot of these in my garbage recycle bin too, right. And I imagine that there's a lot of people that don't bother to go get their dime. Is there a way that this could be separated and redeemed at the curb? At the curb, we would have to have the drivers dig through people's. Um, no, no, no. If I, if I, if I, if I, I'm sorry, I do. <laughs> we need 300 more drivers to separate yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. garbage. I'm sorry, that's what, not what I was implying. My, my, if I were to separate all of these bottles at home and uh, they, were, they were in a separate bin, is there a way to not only recycle them but redeem redeem them? I, I would never. I didn't. Never thought about that. I guess we could look into it, but I know there's. I'm sure there's going to be some local entrepreneurs who would be throwing them in the back of their pickup trucks and getting them before us. Under, uh, understand that. Know. And again, I'm not. I'm, again, please, I'm not trying to be. I'm, I'm not trying to be. You know, um, I'm not suggesting that anybody goes and redeems them at the shop, right? Right. Yeah. But is there a commercial way to redeem these if we separated them, and then? I just don't know if that's even possible. I believe the bottles need, and cans need to be brought back to where you purchase them. So I don't know if it would be, there'd be a way to mass redeem them. I don't think so. I think you can bring, can't you just go to any redeeming so redemption sell, center as long as they- But it's, they, it's we're talking the volume now, if you're talking, volume. it's not just like homeowner, you might be bringing 20 or 30, whatever it is, we're, we're you may be talking, you know, tens of thousands. No, you would bring a truck full and, right. That's. And I'm just wondering we, if anybody is doing anything on that front to, to actually. My my peers, on that. my local peers, no. Okay. I, but I can. We can still do some research and okay. see what's out there. All right. That that's it. I believe cans for kids mm -hmm. will bring and put a bin at your house, right. and you can fill it, and they'll come every so often and empty it, and then they use the money for the programs that they. Right. And if, and if there's again, if it's a community program where we can encourage that and take the burden off of our recycling, Correct. It, if they're right, it, it's how do we minimize the burden on DPW and the taxpayer by finding another source for this that's valuable? I, John, that's I agree asking. with you. No, so, I agree with okay. you. I mean, we're throwing away 10 cents right. and paying to throw it away for right. the weight. I get it. Where if we gave it away, right. I like it. Right. But, you know, maybe we team up. Yeah, with a local charity or something. Right. I, I do. I do think. I do think there are companies out there that that do this. They will. They have a truck that will actually come and redeem your uh, recyclables. It's, uh, I, I can. I can go back and do some research, but I've seen it. 
um, and I'm just not sure whether it's spreading uh, or it's it's a failed technology or concept. Yeah. But we'll that's yeah, what I'll have to look in it tomorrow. We'll, I'll send we'll send the, what we find to the manager okay. tomorrow. Because the more we pull out of recycling for other things, makes it less expensive for us all, right? Correct. Okay. The less tonnage, the, you know. Right. Thank you. I think somebody. So the ask was for 10 cruisers, correct? Initially 17. 17. 17. And I funded, then we cut it back to 10. I put in 10. And, and we are now. You're at the council suggestion was five. Five. Right. So we've gone from 17 is the ask and the need to five. Crest, and also right. they wanted one Crest Sprinter and one, vehicle. And one Crest vehicle, right. right. So, okay, so that's, so we've eliminated that. The list of training that is in the Chief's 1% re reduction seems pretty substantial. Like, there's a lot of training that we're not gonna cover for, to save $75,000, right? Correct. So that's pretty substantial. I, I just think that this, we, we are, I mean, I don't understand how we're going to have a police force that we're not going to train. We're not going to give them cars. Uh, it's not that we don't give them cars, but we, we're, we are behind in our auto replacement. Now we're eliminating and suggesting that we're going to eliminate positions. I, I'm, I'm really not, I'm really not comfortable with the changes here at all. And we can invite the chief. Huh? What position did we eliminate? The, if we go further with the the community officer and we also suggested were we suggesting eliminating and maybe i misunderstood the canine officer if we did no, no, not no, the dog the dog not the not the officer the right dog okay. retires it. it's fine okay right beyond that i mean i just i just think that there are substantial cuts here that are i mean the training makes me incredibly uncomfortable and i know how badly behind we were on the vehicle replacements before and tried to get make some catch up and make some headway on that and we're going to just put ourselves right back into that position where we have supply chain issues as everybody here knows that you can't just go to the ford dealer and buy a police cruiser it's it's a three-year waiting period so I, I have some very serious concerns about what's being proposed here and i appreciate the comments the chief will be available for follow-up and as the council said and mike um, and Gina, when we did this 1%, they didn't suggest that you were going to do it to all departments across the board, but they wanted to see what it would look, look like, and this is what it looks like. So then you can discuss it and put back in if you think things are appropriate. And again, if you have questions, we'll get that director here. Tonight, I knew we weren't going to have time after Public Works to do much more. So we'll, we'll have them available if you want any directors to explain it. But as I said, the biggest departments here are Public Works and the police under the 1% scenario. This is up to you. If the chief is going to make himself available and we want to table this, I'm fine with that, too. I don't. Well, let's start picking away at it first and then see what questions he has. As far as the cars go, John, once we receive the list of cars and we realize that the police department has over 73 vehicles, 73 for a, <coughs> a, a shift that does not exceed 20. And we got the list of how many take them home, which everybody looked at me like I had two heads when I said they're taking them home. You saw the same list I saw, John. So the town manager, I believe, has already started taking actions that these people don't take the vehicles home. Maybe if they do take a vehicle home, they don't take a brand new cruiser home because out of the 73 vehicles, 43 of them are 21 year or newer. So 43 vehicles are 21 or newer. So I think we're okay on the cruisers and giving them five more because I don't believe the total number should be 73. That's insane. How did our police force grow to 73 cars? Every time you buy, drive by the police department, it looks like an auction yard for police cars. So that's why I'm okay dropping okay, the I five. Can I respond? Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. I, no, John still got it. Okay. So, um, I would love to have the chief's perspective on that. And uh, he also went through a list. Uh, he also went through the list of all the cars that were brought home and the reasons why people brought them home. It wasn't as though 
they brought them home because they were using them to go on vacation. There were, I mean, some of them were crest vehicles that were on call. That, I mean, there was, there was an explanation as to why vehicles were going home for a variety of different reasons. The canine officers brought their vehicles home. Those are just a couple that I can recall. So there was a very full explanation as to why that was. Um, so, yeah, I just, I just beg to differ on this point, okay, I guess. Okay, thank you. Councilman Love. <laughs> What's the correlation between marijuana and the dogs? I mean, are, are all the dogs, I, I know that they sniff out marijuana, but is that what they're doing today? Or are they, no, but are they had... helping with defense? Are they sniffing for other things? Are they, like, what is now, their job? Now the dogs, uh, dogs are created to sniff certain things, bombs, guns. I mean, right. the chief went through. It's amazing. I know what they can do. And they had marijuana dogs that would smith, sniff a car. Right. I'm, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just I, I'm not sure if you're making the assumption that they're marijuana sniffing dogs and they may be heroin sniffing dogs or bomb sniffing dogs. Or I just want to understand that I get we, I get your point. We don't need a marijuana sniffing dog, but I'm not sure. Are they all marijuana? Are they marijuana sniffing dogs? Oh, or what are they doing? Not all marijuana sniffing. As dogs. the chief explained to me, you can't deprogram a dog once it's been trained to sniff marijuana. So if we have a dog that sniffs marijuana, and now it's legal, what's the point of having a right? And I guess do we, is that do we have that or do we not have that? Um, <laughs> I believe some of our dogs were marijuana sniffing, but I don't want to speak out of school though. So I'll, okay. but all right. just generally Thanks. speaking, that's what the point was. However, going along that point, there are a lot of criminals that are out there and you know so if they if, if they have to do their sniffing for illegal activities they're doing their job right but if they sniff marijuana because that's what they're trained to do well that's I, not I, illegal now so they don't they're not sure what they're sniffing that wouldn't be probable cause if they sniff marijuana well, and then we well go. Uh, yeah right I, so we shouldn't be getting into the yeah, tactical right, operations right. of the police so department. John, like, we just, this is not our uh, job. The, the, the bottom line is we're, we're thinking about, uh, I'm concerned about elimination of a canine. Right. Um, so, so. And you're okay if we regionalize, regionalize a yes, dog or correct. all the dogs for that matter. Because like I said, they're all separate. And we'll ask the chief. Yeah. yeah. And then, so John, you're saying... Mm -hmm. You want to illegal make marijuana illegal again so we could keep the dog for I'm marijuana? On board. Is you that have my support? No, I think I that's what support. you and Mike were I saying. I didn't say that. I, I did not say that. <laughs> See, right. if we weren't we on, be if, listen, if we were if we were not on TV, I would actually make a joke, but I'm I, know, not, I will I be know. misunderstood. And I so I'm going <laughs> to, uh, no, 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 because it's, it's actually uh, something else that. Thank you. Councilman. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So I, I just want to be clear. The, the organizations we're talking about is the Council on Aging, the Network Against Domestic Abuse, Amplify Inc., which is a K-12 sort of educational program, Educational Resources for Kids, the Food Shelf, Kite, Enfield People for People, Allied Rehabilitation, the Enfield Homefront Team, and Lowe's and Fishes. We're going to and 25% uh, across all of those. I, I mean, these are small donations that make a big impact for these uh, organizations. And I, I'm just not in with all that we have in this budget. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to support that. But I just wanted to clarify who exactly we're talking about for the people who may be listening. So I, I just won't support that. I don't care if we yeah. meet Monday downstairs so or not. I'm not sure that the air is totally clear, just so you know. I, I'm, oh, okay. I'm just not. Oh. So I, I'm okay. I'm being honest with you. Okay, I, I really John. am. So We just discussed it I, and I got it. So I'm going to go home and see yeah. all over Facebook again where you're feeding people misinformation. Ken, I don't they post just anything on Facebook. Other, I'm not going. <laughs> first of all, you know, do I have the floor? Do I have the floor? Not really. You don't. No, okay. We well, talking, are you recognizing we me or not? We're talking about a meeting. Well, don't throw shots at me like I'm that. Like I'm going to. You, you did too. You just said I'm going to go home and post on Facebook uh, that we're not going to board on, here. guys. Let's go. This is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So, do you want so, next Monday after our special meeting here at four? Do you want deliberations in Skidiko or in this room? We're up here. Well, we've got to go. Right, we'll stay what do you we're think, Bob? up here. Let's stay here. So I'm good with that. Absolutely. I'm the same thing. That. We'll Fine. publish. We'll let people know. We'll put it on my Facebook again. Um, in the library for one second because I didn't. Yeah, get I don't know how we got off the I, library. Yeah, just, just 
one thing, and then we can go back to this, because I didn't get a chance to fully review the 1%. There's $14,000 for books and $1,000 for periodicals. Jason has been very responsible financially. If we we're going to put anything back from his 1%, a library without new books and periodicals, can we consider giving him $15,600 for that? I would like to ask for that. And I, I guess my question is, we can ask, but how do we fund them, John? How, it, it does matter. If you want something, come up with a way to fund it, and I, I'd be wide open to sure. hearing it. And you know, we have several other departments to go through, and I will find $15,600 somewhere else. I promise, if we can get past the library, giving them the money they need for books and periodicals. I will, I will give you thirty-two grand to get rid of CCM. So I will agree with it. What? Do not subscribe to CCM. Okay. <laughs> He's making I'm, a trade. I'm with making a trade. I'll get. I'll give you the books and. Okay, well, I, I, I found it for you, so you don't even have to look. That's pretty genius. Yeah. Are you saying no? No, I, I really like to just deal with the library, and then we He's can talk about that He's dealing with the library. I, He's giving you your money, listen, but he found a way I'm to fund I'm not horse trading. I got it. I, and all right, would you, can we come back to the library, and I'll find fifteen thousand dollars elsewhere. So I, I just, John, if you read the thousand on periodicals, he even explains that it's it's not even going to hurt much. So. I, I'm just trying to save you. A okay, thousand well, can I get your? Can, I'll tell you what. I'll give you the thousand for periodicals if I can get the fourteen <laughs> six for books. How's that? How's that? We can deal with it. Okay. I mean, I've considered this for just a few minutes. I don't know whether or not there's, if it's taking us back to 2010, have things changed substantially enough that we're understaffing the department? Do we really need this position? What's HR's assessment? I just, I don't know what the workload is in the tax assessor's office and what everybody does and what kind of impact this is going to have in terms of their work and the um, the effectiveness of the office. So I'd like to just know more other than we have a vacancy. Well, we can always come back to you and give you an update um, at some point. But uh, recently you guys filled in an assistant assessor position just recently of last year so now we have two people in that position and then we have uh two people for the tax collector supervisory position but one would just move there solely to do that and now with this resignation um you know departments ebb and flow with the workload so we're only coming to you yes we like we did last time in mid-year to fill the assistant assessor position I, I don't think any of us here has a crystal ball uh, what the impact's going to be until we go forward and we see what happens. But um, I, I can, that, that was breaking news. I can confer with John and, and give an assessment. We've been obviously preparing for a budget and other stuff this uh, today, so we didn't have a chance to really, uh, I'm going to do an exit interview with the person and get more insight. But um, as far as I know, it's, which is literally just five, six hours fresh in my mind is what I know. Um, she submitted a resignation, and I'll, I'll get a better insight once I do an exit interview. But um, I don't know what to tell you as far as fulfilling the position or not. That is a budget um, deliberation for you guys to decide. I'm sorry, but it's not. It, it, so we're doing budget deliberations, but it's not necessarily a deliberation issue, right? We need to know that the departments are staffed appropriately, and that's the question. And I don't, I'm asking if based on what you know about how the department's functioning, is this a critical, uh, I mean, it's is this a critical role? What's the <laughs> workload? Has this person been not having enough to do, quite honestly? Like, I, I'm, I really don't understand any of that. So, it's beyond just a budget, a, the timeliness of us deliberating the budget. That's all that I'm asking. Um, okay, yeah. John. I, I was just, we had, we did have the meeting the other day. We, we, like, <clears throat> we have to have this money back in. There's just no, for a whole host of reasons, this money has to go back in. Um, Maybe we'll sit down with her after. Yeah, and, that's, yeah. and th there's just some, yeah, there's just things we can't talk about on the floor, frankly, I think. Yeah. Bob? Oh, yes. Chris? 
could you just weigh in, please? Do you find it useful? Is it is it going to CCM membership? Is it is it going to be punitive to not have it? The question was asked about. Okay, if we don't get information from that source, what's the opportunity cost? Are we going to get it from somewhere else? I, I just I don't you know, I don't get involved. So and I I've just would like to hear from you. Not and having understand. heard all of the what went before, I've heard I think uh, a lot of the conversation in the past. Um, I don't know, John, to be truthful, because when I was here and a member of it, it was during COVID. So my tenure, we really, I mean, attending meetings in person, we really didn't do, and they hadn't perfected Zoom yet. So I, I didn't take advantage. I know other managers in the past, to more or less some degree, I wasn't as privy. I know some utilized it and thought highly of it. One of the areas that I know we used it as town attorney was when we wanted to know somebody would like us, and they come to mind, a sample curfew ordinance or a sample any of some of the issues that confront us, we would ask them and they would give us that. So as town attorney, I utilize it. As manager, I have not. I see the different things that they offer. Even coming back for the last six or seven months, I haven't availed myself. Having said that, that doesn't mean, you know, there are things there I could have taken advantage of or staff. I know that finance utilizes some of it for information. I really had very little to do with it, but I wouldn't, that's my experience, John. I wouldn't want to push you in either direction, can always rejoin it. I could check with some colleagues, but I just never had the occasion in the things we're doing to utilize their services. Yeah. So the other question is, are we are we using it properly to maximize its use? I mean, when you talk about being able to get ordinances and not yep. have to draft them from beginning, like for just for me, that's lawyer time, which inherently is right. expensive because and you're, you're just not only drafting, but you're also having to get samples from everywhere else and re recreate the wheel again. I, as a counselor, I'm not calling them for that kind of information. So I, I just, I don't know how many people in the department and I don't know whether or not we're gonna ultimately just have a have to create our own repository of information that's readily available, even though you know, I agree that we probably are not getting the best representation uh, from a lobbying stamp, not you, Ken. Oh. <laughs> you were have a sense of humor, Ken. I did. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't pointing at you. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that part, right? I'm giving you, a, but, get your books back. In. But my, I, all I'm asking, Mike, is if, if this helps them as a source for information that is going to cost us more in the long run to get from 15 other sources, is it thirty thousand dollars well spent? to help the entire staff to get stuff versus having to go pay for it on a one-off or spend time and resources. I don't know, I don't work here. I'm, that's why I'm asking them. Yeah, 